Hello everyone. Welcome to my new video. Today, we're exploring a vulnerable machine called Lazy Sys Admin. This machine is part of a single series on Volhub, and it's rated as easy in terms of difficulty. To get started, head over to the Volnhub website and download the vulnerable image for Lazy Sys Admin. If you're new to Volnhub, be sure to check out our Volnhub playlist for helpful videos that will guide you through the process. Let's dive in and see how we can exploit this machine. Settings up. Once you've downloaded the image, the next step is setting up the server in VirtualBox. The downloaded image is in the form of a zip file, so the process involves extracting the zip file and installing it by creating a new VM. First, we need to extract the zip file using WinRAR. After extraction, I discovered several helpful files, including the VMDK files. Our next step involves creating a new virtual machine. In VirtualBox, click on New to create a new VM. Name it Lazy Sysadmin and select the operating system type as Linux. Set the version to other Linux 64-bit since we are unsure of the exact distribution. Proceed by allocating RAM for your VM and click Next. Select Use an existing virtual hard disk file and import the VMDK file extracted earlier. After clicking Next, click on Finish to complete the setup. Once the import is finished, you'll see the lazy sysadmin vulnerable machine in the VirtualBox Manager. Now, change the network adapter to host only. It's important to ensure that both your Kali Linux machine, used for attacks, and the vulnerable machine are connected to the same network. So make sure they're both connected via the host only adapter. Next, attempt to start the VM to check if it works. Finally, you'll notice that our vulnerable machine is ready, with a login prompt awaiting. Let's dive into the fun. Enumeration The initial step in our attack is enumeration, which involves identifying the IP address of our target machine using NetDiscover. To execute this, open a terminal and run NetDiscover-I followed by specifying the network interface name, which in this case is ETH1. From the scan results, we've obtained our target IP address, 192.168.95.22. Next, we'll conduct a network scan to identify open ports, a crucial step in the enumeration process. This helps us understand the attack surface and strategize targeted attacks. We'll use the popular nmap tool for this task. Run nmap-sc-sv followed by specifying the IP address. In this command, Hyphen SC is used to perform a script scan using the default set of scripts, while hyphen SV enables version detection, allowing us to identify which versions are running on which port. After completing the network scan, several open ports with corresponding services were revealed. Port 22, TCP running in SSH Secure Shell Service version 6.6.1 on Ubuntu. With valid credentials, we can easily log into the target server. Port 80, TCP running an HTTP web server service using Apache HTTPD version 2.4.7. Additional details include the server title, backnode, and the software used to generate the web pages, Silex version 2.2.7. Ports 139 and 445, TCP running NetBIOS name service, Samba, version 4.3.11. These ports are commonly used for file and printer sharing in Windows environments. Port 3306, TCP running a MySQL database service. The service is running, but it's unclear whether it's password protected. Port 6667, TCP running an IRC service, chat application, with InspireCD server. Information about the server and a single connected user is provided. We should take advantage of these ports to gain a foothold on the server. Before doing so, let's enumerate these ports further to find potential clues or vulnerabilities. Among these open ports, I find SMB ports 139 and 445, and HTTP port 80 quite interesting. Let's enumerate these ports to find potential clues or vulnerabilities, starting with the SMB ports. SMB, server message block, 
Ports are often used for file sharing and can sometimes reveal sensitive information or allow access to files. In some cases, developers might mistakenly leave these ports unprotected, allowing access without a password. First, let's list the available shares on the SMB server. When prompted for a password, just hit enter to continue without providing the password. This will display various shared resources. Among these, I noticed a share dollar that looks interesting and it might contain useful files. Next, we will connect to the share dollar resource on the target server to retrieve the files and directories. Upon a successful connection, several directories and files are listed, including WordPress, Backnote Files, WP, Deets.txt, Robots.txt, ToDoList.txt, Apache, Index.html, Info.php, Test, and Old. Upon careful analysis, it appears these files and directories constitute the default HTTP directory path of the target system. The presence of a directory named WordPress suggests that the target server may host a WordPress CMS. To confirm this assumption, let's explore the content of the website running on port 80. Open a web browser of your choice and navigate to the target's IP address in the URL bar at the top of the window. Upon exploring the website, it looks like a default page of Backnode, which doesn't provide any clues. However, this does confirm that the SMB file share we connected matches the website's file structure. To gather more information, we will use a directory busting tool to enumerate the directories on the web server and compare these with the files and directories listed in the SMB share. This will help us identify any discrepancies or additional information. For this task, I am going to use GoBuster. After analyzing the output, my assumption was confirmed. Now, let's look at the content of the WordPress directory. Continue our enumeration from where we left off with the SMB content. Navigate to the WordPress directory and list its contents. Several WordPress-related files are listed, including wpconfig.php. The wpconfig.php file is particularly interesting because it typically contains database credentials. Let's retrieve the wpconfig.php file using the get command. This will automatically download and save it to the Kali home directory. Now, let's examine the wpconfig.php file, which often contains database credentials and other sensitive information. Upon accessing it, I find the username and password. We can use these credentials to log into the WordPress admin dashboard, where we can manage everything and potentially gain a foothold on the target system. Foothold. Previously, while enumerating the file share using an SMB client, we found the username and password. Let's use these credentials to log in. In your browser, navigate to the WP admin page to access the WordPress login area. WP Admin is the default login page for the WordPress dashboard. Enter the retrieved username and password. Great, we have successfully logged into the server. With access to the dashboard, we have various ways to establish a shell connection. Here, I will take advantage of modifying a PHP file in the template. Navigate to Appearance, where you will see options related to the website's appearance. Click on Editor to edit the themes. The current theme in use is 2015. Select any PHP file to modify. I will choose 404.php. Clear the PHP content of the file and replace it with a PHP reverse shell script. Locate the script on your terminal and open it with a text editor like Mousepad. Copy the entire script and paste it into the WordPress editor. Before saving, modify the listening host and listening port. If you don't know your IP address, use the ifconfig command to check it. Save the changes and start a listener using Netcat. Visit the 404 template page to trigger the reverse shell connection. We have successfully established a shell connection. Now, let's spawn an interactive shell using Python. 
It's time to check for the user flag, typically located in the home directory of the existing user. Navigate to the home directory and list the files and directories to identify the username. It looks like the username of the target system is Toby. Change to this directory and look for the flag, but there is no flag here. This suggests the flag is only in the root directory. Attempting to access the root directory results in a permission denied error, indicating we lack the necessary rights. Let's escalate our privileges to gain access. Privilege Escalation During the privilege escalation process, our primary goal is to gather system information and identify any vulnerabilities or misconfigurations that could provide elevated privileges, ultimately allowing us to gain root access. Previously, we found the username of the target system, Toby. If we can find the password for this username, it may help us escalate our privileges further. There is a file named deets.txt that we haven't examined yet. Let's retrieve and analyze it. Upon analyzing the text, I found the password. Now that we have both the username and password, let's switch to the user Toby using the su command. We have successfully switched to the user Toby. Next, we need to examine the permissions assigned to users to assess their privileges on the system. This can be done by executing commands like sudo-l to view the commands the current user can run with elevated privileges. It appears that the user Toby has permission to run all commands with sudo. This means we can access, modify, or do anything on the system. Let's check the root flag to complete the session. However, it shows a restricted error again. To work properly, we need to run the sudo su command to switch to the root user. Now, let's try again. This time, it worked. Upon listing the files and directories, I found the flag named proof.txt. If you have any doubts or queries, please write them in the comments section. See you then.